Welcome back guys. Today you are in for a real treat. You're about to see my friends, two liter Accord Sport manual transmission and it really couldn't have gone to a better guy. This guy that you're about to meet, his name is Ryan Felix and uh, before this, he used to own a Civic LX and what he did with this car has been nothing short of extraordinary. This car that he had, you would not be able to tell that it was an LX anything. It looked super custom, unlike any other LX Civic that you've seen. I'm excited to show you guys this car, let you guys meet this man. Uh, I am posting his Instagram in the description, so he's definitely gonna be tagged in this video. And he's already told me about what he's done with this car behind me. So there's a little sneak peek of the back of it. But the reason I'm showing this to you guys is because he's doing it right. He's taking utmost care of his car with ceramic coatings, with protection films and all that. I'm gonna let this man tell you all about it. But before, I'm super grateful for him uh, bringing his car over that he did buy from us here. And I'll tell you that story too, cause it's an awesome story. For that, I, I did want to give him a gift. Thank you. I've been trying to figure out, like, ever since you sent this to me on Facebook, trying to figure out what it is that you guys ended up getting me. We're gonna find out if I can open it. <laughs> <laughs> Darn you Amazon and your good packaging. What have we got here? This is a, it's like a dash kit. That's amazing. Yeah. And it'll fit every single surface. And then I, it'll fit your key fob. It's just, there's no remote That's start. That's cool. Just, it'll, it'll yeah. Fit those I saw that, yeah. that remote start thing that you guys, you and Greg did. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie. I'm a little curious if that's actually going to work. I appreciate, thank you. Yeah, you got definitely, it, brother. Definitely appreciate that. I appreciate you, man. Let me set this here. In the, yeah, yeah, in yeah. The Go ahead. And, and while you're doing that, I'm going to tell them the story of uh, when you got this car. So Ryan ended up getting this car under very, very special circumstances. He was already thinking about getting out of his Civic into a two liter and he knew he wanted a manual transmission. But on that particular day, there was an accident at the corner of our lot. And literally this lady, it was a hit and run. She was driving a truck. The lady ends up stranded on the side and Ryan here, he stopped and he literally stuck with her for how long? Uh, it was about an hour and a half, two hours. Stop. It was it was cold out. It was starting to set. The sun was going down. It was cold. She was by herself. I don't, I don't think that any woman should be stranded by herself. And at first, <clears throat> I was leaving Home Depot with my wife, and I was sitting there thinking to myself, you know, what the heck is this person sitting in the middle of the street for? And then I realized she was involved in an auto accident, so I pulled over to the shoulder and just out of curiosity, just asked to see if she was okay, and she was kind of in a panic, so. I just stuck around to help her out and kind of, you know, walk her through the process of, you know, if she's ever been in an auto accident and kind of a little tips and pointers on what to do. So, um, you know, but I stood there with her for whatever reason. Uh, dispatch was kind of booked for the evening. So because it was non-emergent, I don't think that they rushed to it as they should have. But uh, yeah, no, we were out there in the cold. Uh, for about an hour and a half, two hours. Yeah, and um, no, and, and he, like, Ryan told me that day too, hundreds of people passed by, didn't even stop, <laughs> and uh, he was the one, and he was climbing under this thing, and traffic was going. Of course, I went over there and started talking to him, and after we made sure that lady was addressed, we ended up talking, and uh, he was like, yeah, I, I've been thinking about that two liter sport uh, Accord with a manual transmission. Do you guys, can you guys find one? I know it's late in the year, but can you guys find one? And, and guys, you know, those who have researched these Accord two liters with the manual transmission, they're pretty much, if not rarer than type R's. I feel like I've had more type R's here at my dealership than I've ever seen the two liter. I've had one this whole entire year. I have one, I have had one. So when Ryan told me that he was interested in getting one, I was just like, dude, it's a needle in haystack. But dude, if, if anyone deserves it, it's him. Um, you'll see if you guys end up following him on Instagram. Again, I'm going to put that in the description, his Instagram, so you can follow all the things that he's going to do with the car behind me. I know you guys want to get to it, but hold on one more, one more second. But I just knew that this car is going to be in good hands. And if it's going to be uh, somebody that we're going to hunt a car down for, it's going to be Ryan Felix. So Ryan, show us this whip. Okay. What have you done so far? We purchased it and signed all the paperwork uh, November 16th, uh, 2018. Um, and then we did, I, I had to wait like almost the longest week of my life. Um, we waited a week and I want to say the 22nd or the 23rd, uh, the following Friday is when I actually 
was able to come pick this thing up um, due to shipping and you know having to actually secure the vehicle, find it, get a hold of it. Yeah. I had a buddy of mine um, applied the, it's a 3M um, Scotch Guard paint protection fill material. Uh, it's eight millimeters thick. Um, George from Superior Touch Auto Detailing here in Santa Maria, California, um, went ahead and did the whole front end. Um, typically with uh, paint protection film, you would do something that's a pre-cut. Um, leave it to me. I don't want to just settle for standard. I wanted something that was fully custom and all everything seamless. So George spent um, about three and a half, four days fully doing a front end PPF installation for me. 100% um, seamless, you can't even tell it's there. He did the front bumper, the headlights, both fenders, the hood, um, the front grill. Um, he did the mirrors for me, the A-pillars, all the door cups. Um, he did the trim around the door pieces and then also the trunk. Um, there's about a three inch panel, just in case you're loading your groceries or whatever, you know, if you have a family and you're not like me where you don't just eat burritos and top ramen to save all your money for your car. <laughs> the black roof I decided that I wanted to do something a little different and um, it's stereotypical that people who wrap the roof end up doing like a gloss black or matte black um, the roof wrap that I have it's called a galaxy black um, I want to say it's through 3m and if it's not 3m I want to say it's Avery Denison um, I work for a graphic design and wrap company here in Santa Maria California so that's kind of something that I was able to do myself and save a little bit of money in my pocket. Um, Five Star Graphics is who I'm a part of and we were able to get that taken care of. Um, I'm kind of debating whether I want to do some like different type of wrapping materials here and there as far as the vehicle. Um, I'm thinking about maybe doing the rocker panels down on the bottom of the vehicle like in the same as the Galaxy Black but time will tell. So as far as the rest of the vehicle here um, I had George from Superior Touch Detailing also went ahead and applied the um, 3M PPF paint protection film to the window pillars and then also back here. So gosh, that looks so glossy. Right? That is like, because the normal, the normal pillars, like it's not this glossy and it's easy to have swirl marks. Is this material like so, easy to have swirl marks or no? One thing I forgot to do um, before I prepped the whole car, um, I totally failed to prep these pillars. And when I took uh, the vehicle to get ceramic coated by Steve, um, just and just for the for like for people that are wondering um, why I took my vehicle to get ceramic coated if I do it myself. So the ceramic coating that is now on the market through, uh, through CarPro, the C-Quartz uh, Finest, is a ceramic coating that I don't have access to because I have not taken all their courses. Um, Steve Torres from Steve Central Coast Detailing has uh, govern, gone above and beyond to further his knowledge and education. And like I said, he became the 96th person in the nation to, uh, to achieve that and uh, he did me the favor um, as far as just you know throwing his name out there and stuff like that but it's it's a long-term coding it's something that i don't have access to so um, that is why i had him go ahead and do it but as far as these as far as these pillars here though um, i failed to prep them so when i took the vehicle in to get ceramic coated and also the uh, paint protection film done um, I had just told him to go ahead and lay the film directly over it. Um, it eliminated a lot of the swirls. You can still see some of them in there, but mm. um, currently what's on the top of this here is that 3M um, oh, material. So this isn't black. So yeah, It's no, clear. Yeah, this is clear. Oh, so shoot. what you see underneath it is actual, the raw um, gloss black that was underneath it. Yeah, it's so, way better than just having them exposed, yeah. just the panel itself, having that, that coating on it. If I and if I can definitely make a recommendation for you other people out there that are going to watch this channel, I would definitely recommend that. And, and even if it's not even a cord, like if you have black pillars, a lot of us tend to grab that top piece as we're closing our door. As time goes on, you're just going to scratch it, scuff it, and it's going to look nasty. So do yourself a favor, either wrap it or ceramic coat it or find some type of protection for it. That's so true. It's funny because like, yeah, you see, you start to see the fingerprints here. Well, actually, when I closed the door earlier, I did leave some of that. I had my I had my microfiber cloth that I've been wiping this down with. And then that same protection film 
goes all the way. There is a clear line right here. I think you should be able to see it now. But this goes all the way through halfway uh, up the pillar here, and it actually follows all the way down. The whole front end is wrapped. Anything that's gonna be potentially hit by any rocks that come off the freeway or, or on the road are gonna bounce right off of it, just like a, a cell phone cover. And you're saying that the uh, the headlights, yes. right? Yeah, the, the headlights, headlights done also. The, the hood, uh, even this, even the, the grill? Yeah, that was done also. The grill even has that protection. Even this little, like all the all the small stuff. Uh, that that doesn't have doesn't it have it. There. Okay. Uh, the only reason is because I'm gonna change that out, but I don't know what to yet. And I've just kind of been making my time to figure out what I'm gonna do with that. Yeah. So, so the whole hood, the whole hood is yeah, done. The whole, the whole hood is done. Actually, kind of gets you a little something that not, nobody else is actually gonna see. So if you look right here, you can see where the material that they use to wrap this with not only um, got done all the way but they tucked it underneath the hood here so this is definitely something not a lot of people are going to be able to see because obviously the hood's not going to be open yeah so that that whole edge is just completely surrounded so no no chances of any chipping on the sides too for any reason right right that's legit and then also i saw the doors too right the doors yeah, the door cups i don't know if you were able to pick this up but the door cups so a lot of us naturally, when we go to get into our vehicle, our fingernails will scuff this piece here. Very natural, 100%. I do it myself. When you go to get into your car, your nails will rub against it. And as time goes on, you'll scratch it and it'll start to turn all black. This is all wrapped right here. This whole door cup is wrapped with that paint protection film that the front cup, no, the whole front end is also. Yeah, so you so guys need to do this, this to your this cars. This piece here, I can scratch it all day long. Um, it's very scratch resistant. Uh, they've done many tests on it. They've actually taken like a bucket of nails and thrown them at them. And it just, with a heat gun, it forms itself. And, um, actually, so one of your uh, one of your mechanics here. Um, uh, Ryan friend, Ewing. Yeah, Ryan Ewing. Um, Ryan Ewing paid some good money to have his, uh, his S2000 wrapped with the same material. Um, if anything hits it or any rock chips happen to hit it and it, it nicks it or tears it, you heat it with a heat gun or boiling water and it'll immediately, it's self healing. So wow definitely recommend it if you can if you can spare the money i would definitely make you know that investment to protect it yeah guys i mean uh, all this stuff all uh, especially on the on the black i love that and then just again i mean talking he talked about it too is just this that galaxy, galaxy black. black oh my goodness i ooh, it's so nice <laughs> yeah everybody just does the regular gloss uh black that is amazing I had uh, Steve from C Steve Central Coast Detailing um, went ahead and did me a huge favor, um, went above and beyond and did a ceramic coating job for me. Um, I do I do all my own myself. Um, for those of you who are going to follow my Instagram page, um, I am an automotive detailer myself. But uh, Steve has uh, definitely won some awards and, and further hit his education into his own business. And he is actually now number 96 um, in the nation to be a Secourt's finest um, installer. So um, he did me the favor by uh, going above and beyond and applying the material um, to my vehicle. I did all the prep work. Um, sorry, Steve, that's the hard part, but so, um, but he, he applied all the material for me um, and then let it bake under the um, IR light. Um, on my Instagram page, you will see that there's a picture of my vehicle and it's got like a red background. That's gonna be the infrared light that's curing it. Clearly, there's the wheels and tires, not factory. Um, those are mine from my other vehicle that I had. Um, those are a set of 19 by 10 inch uh, Rohana RC10s. If that wasn't um, on them currently, I've got a set of 255, 35 19s. I got a brand new set of tires sitting at home. These ones are a little too stressed and wide for me. So. Um, the front lip I bought on Amazon. I got um, Raymond from S Fabrications. He's making a um, ABS and aluminum composite splitter kit for me as we speak. Um, he's done a lot of splitters. I know for some of the Accord guys. Um, that's actually how I found out about that specific splitter kit was through another person on Instagram who has it. And I was like super jealous. So. <laughs> Um, I got that coming. It's supposed to be here. I'm hoping within the next two weeks. If you look on the back of the vehicle currently, there is no back paneling piece. I'm in the middle of uh, tearing apart the stereo and redoing it. So stay tuned for that. The rear spoiler, um, I wrapped myself also as I did with the top of the roof. That is also going to be the Galaxy Black material that I use from 3M. 
Um, other than that, there's really nothing too crazy up after that. It's, you know, just as far as the detailing process of the vehicle. Uh, start to finish, it was about a 28 hour job. Cool thing is that I don't have to do it for another 10 years. So this, the car was ceramic coated, um, like I said, so that's freshly done within the last 48 hours. I'm just kind of waiting for it to fully cure. It takes about five to seven days. Um, you can take a vehicle that's directly off of um, a truck that's been transported uh, from the factory. A lot of it has to do with um, specifically, I, I mean, it's pretty much any vehicle, but a lot of them are due to uh, shipping and freighting. Um, some of them come over by, by railroad and what ends up happening is because of the railroads, uh, they kick up a lot of dust and, and rust fragments. You'll get a lot of um, in what's called industrial fallout. And on one of the images that I did of my vehicle prior to detailing it, there was a lot of uh, rust composite material that was sitting on the top, but also known as industrial fallout. Um, something like that doesn't seem like it's gonna do a lot of harm and damage to your vehicle, but as time goes on with rust, if it gets wet, it starts to eat away at the clear coat and it'll start to embed itself into the actual paint surface itself. So I went ahead and I did a full clay bar kit on my vehicle, um, start to finish. That was about a good hour and a half, two hour job. <laughs> so, um, and then after that, I went ahead and did a two-step correction to remove a lot of like the embedded swirl marks that were on there. Um, just from being washed and then uh, I did a polish job and then I went ahead and, and soaked it down with house isopropyl alcohol to remove a lot of the uh, access polishes and stuff like that right now it's sitting on actually that's one thing I failed to mention so obviously if you look at the fender there's a lot of gap missing so um, my wife and I uh, we took a took advantage of a Black Friday sale through uh, BC Racing and I ordered a set of uh, BR BC Racing coilovers. Um, I actually just installed those yesterday, so I actually need to go get another alignment. Um, right now it's dropped moderately at a two inch drop evenly all the way around. Um, I wanna say it's maxed out on the rear end, but I think maybe we can kind of play around with that and find where I wanna drop it down about another inch. Uh, me personally, I like that slammed, that slammed look. I, I love that static uh, fitment. So the vehicle was just recently dropped. Um, that was one big thing that I wanted to do. Another plan, um, I, I gotta talk to my wife. We went a little crazy for Christmas. So um, one thing I really wanna do is order a, um, the PRL downpipe. It's a Catalyst three and a half inch and a bottleneck's down to a three inch downpipe um, and order the up pipe also that goes with it. Um, and then from there, probably do a cutout because I don't wanna get pulled over. It's, I got a long history of getting t tickets and license plate tickets and exhaust tickets. So um, it's kind of nice to be able to have that on and off switch to where you'll be able to make that noise when you want to and then back out of it when you want to get into your neighborhood late at night. So um, the K-Tuner, there's a K-Tuner that I want to buy. I'm kind of debating whether to go to either K-Tuner or Hondetta um, to increase the power and kind of reflash the ECU and have a little bit more fun. Um, from the factory, it comes with a certain amount of boost. With that K-Tuner, it allows you to kind of increase that boost and also get a little bit more out of the horsepower and uh, foot-pounds of torque. The uh, factory airbox um, is good, but they do make an aftermarket kit for it through uh, PRL that I want to order. Um, right now, it's sitting in my cart as we speak. I just want to push the click button, but you know, any, any married people watching this, you know that you got to pass that through your other person. So um, hopefully, you know, maybe I can order that stuff for her birthday here in February and just wrap it and say, hey, happy birthday. Now it's going to go on the Accord. So <laughs> um, those are my future plans with it. Um, I, like I said, I do want to drop it down. Right now it's about two inches. I want to drop it down another inch to make it about a three inch drop completely. Um, and then just kind of start doing some interior things. I thought about uh, wrapping some stuff on the inside. <clears throat> um, I don't want to do anything too flashy, too crazy. I, I don't know. To me, I think that the small fine intricate details actually make it a lot cleaner um, than doing something like super flashy um, so as far as plans that's kind of it so far I'm sure as time goes on I'll probably end up uh, doing something pretty crazy I'm thinking about taking um, all the taillights and playing around with the wiring and eliminating some of these lights here and crossing them over here um, still kind of in the works but I want to take out the rear reflector and uh, pull it out sand it and then repaint it the same color of the vehicle um, for those of you who are wondering you might be able to pick up that that pearl 
um, I was able to get the Accord Sport 2.0 in the color I wanted, which is that platinum white pearl. So um, I want to end up painting that rear uh, reflector in the same color to pretty much delete or eliminate that red piece there. Not that I don't like it, I just want to do something different. So. And I, I did mention earlier when I was coming down the stairs that uh, Ryan had a Civic before this that you just had to take a double and triple look at because the Civic was so clean. Gosh, that Civic was unmistakable. It looked like the baby brother of this one. Yeah, Ugh. a lot of people, a lot of people ask me driving down the highway, and you're like, what kind of car is that? You know, I, I, so I never told my wife the story. So I guess this is probably confession time. So I've gotten pulled over a couple times on the highway by CHP, um, not due to speeding or anything, but it was just specifically due to the vehicle. Um, I removed all the emblems. Um, I took the factory emblems, pulled them off, and then I bought some eBay emblems with the, uh, what they call their, their JDM red logo. Um, like I said, I work for a graphic design company and we also do automotive wrapping. So I took those and I wrapped them and kind of created my own logo. Um, I'm a big New York, New York Yankees fan. So I did a, um, a reflective Yankees logo on it. And a lot of people couldn't tell what it was until the sunlight hit it and then you could see it and it turned white. Um, and then it turned back black and it pretty much looked completely naked. So I got pulled over on the highway a few times by CHP just out of curiosity they wanted to like what kind of car is this man like you know there's there's no it's fully unmarked it, there's no logos there's no nothing on it and they're just you know they were curious and the nice thing is too is we here in Santa Maria we kind of have a big car culture a big car community um, and it's kind of cool when you meet somebody else that yeah, that shares that love and passion to be able to sit down and kind of carry a conversation about what you've done with your vehicle. I know it sounds a little childish, but I get a really big enjoyment when somebody asks me, you know, hey, what did you do to your car? Or even when I'm just driving down the road and somebody says, dude, I really like your car. You know, it's, it's such a simple compliment, but from somebody like myself and other people in the car community, it's a big like reassurance knowing that whatever you're doing to your vehicle, a lot of people like take that and they enjoy it too. So in the early 90s, Honda had a really big fan base as far as uh, the young, young, younger generation. Um, when the Fast and the Furious came out, there was a lot of like stigma about the, you know, the Hondas and the Lab Fart cans and whatever else. But as time went on, you saw a lot of younger generations being involved into, into the car culture and the car community. And Honda was always that one specific vehicle that you could go to and make ridiculously fast with an engine swap and or you can do you know a lowering kit on it throw a set of wheels on it um, for those that really like to be flashy you, know, you could put the the neon lights underneath it or on the interior you know and at one point i was that guy i had some of that stuff on my own vehicle but in the early 90s they had a lot of a lot of sports vehicles honda had the civic they had the, the uh, acura type r they had the s2000 ap1 and the ap2 <clears throat> they had the uh, nsx you know they just released a new version of the nsx um, but uh, I think Honda did a really good job in the early 90s and the late 90s with all their sports vehicles. And as time went on, I think that they started straying away from that sports aspect and started gearing all their vehicles towards the middle-aged group and also um, parents. And it's nice to see with the new, the, the new Accord that they offer it in a manual transmission because I think a lot of companies and manufacturers that are making sports vehicles are not able to offer that. Um, manual transmission anymore for somebody like myself who loves to be able to feel that bond between you and your vehicle it's a it's a, a mystical bond between man and machine that is able to be shared you know with that that raw feel of each gear you're able to have be in full control of everything that you're able to do it's nice to see that Honda was able to provide a vehicle um, like the Accord um, in a you know six-speed manual transmission also with a turbocharger um, one thing I would love to see and I know that you know every other fan based uh, Honda driver out there would love to see is if they were able to make another version of the S2000. Um, I don't think the S2000 will ever get old. I know it's one vehicle that you can be driving down the road and it'll just break necks all day long. And if you don't know what that means, it's pretty much driving along and you, you know, you're staring from one direction to another. Um, as they went along in the early 2000s, as, as Honda created new vehicles, I think that they lost that younger generation uh, due to the CRVs and the, the CRZs and some of the you know the Honda Pilot and stuff like that. Not that they're bad vehicles, it's just you know the younger crowd didn't really think can appreciate that vehicle. Um, so, but the new the new 2018 and 2019 Accord Sports that they're making with that turbocharger and in the two-liter along with the six-speed manual transmission, it gives you that raw edge feeling 
um, to be able to drive a manual transmission along with a very clean, sleek looking vehicle. Um, stepping away as far as the power aspect, um, the car offers a lot of, a lot of power um, for what it has as far as a punch with that turbocharger. It hits quickly um, and it's, it's smooth. Um, I always say that uh, smooth is fast. If you have a lot of power, um, but it's very raw and violent power, it's not smooth. You know, in my opinion, anyways. Stepping away from the the speed and power, I know that there's a lot of people that are now being introduced to the to the stance scene, um, as far as the car community. Very nice that you can take a vehicle like this and um, upgrade the wheels and tires, lower it just slightly, and you're already driving around in a clean looking vehicle. Um, that was kind of one thing that I really wanted to do with this is take a vehicle and keep a lot of the factory parts, but also incorporate kind of something that I envisioned um, from what I wanted to do with the Civic. Originally, <clears throat> I wanted to take my Civic that I had um, and put it on airbags. Um, I wanted to check into AccuAir and get their E-Level kit. Um, as far as pricing was concerned, I, think, I thought it was a lot of money um, to go that route. So I ended up going with a set of springs. With this one here, I went with the coilovers. Um, it, it's a good bond between uh, being able to lower but also not sacrifice that ride and if I decide to go out and do you know a, a canyon run with some of my friends or go out and drive on the highway and get you know a little squirrely here and there on, on the turns it's able to hold that so um, but yeah definitely I think that Honda did a really good job with the 2.0 um, it's, it's a great car um, one thing I can honestly say about this is it's not just your your average sports car you know your your average sports car has a lot of that raw power and it's it's very young generation um, with this you can pull up to a car show and have a lot of fun with your friends you can get a lot of attention here in the city or as you're driving anywhere but at the same time it's very family oriented and it's it's got a lot of room um, there's a lot of trunk space there's a lot of rear leg space I'm a big guy I'm 285 and I can sit in that back seat with the seat all the way back and still have about another two to three inches as far as knee space so they did I think they really did a good job as far as creating this thing um, it's also very very well uh, middle age grouped because it's got a lot of nice fancy features. It's got a lot of uh, cool little features. It's got your, you know, your, your mitigation, your <coughs> your heated seats. That was that was a big plus. I've never had heated seats before. Um, so definitely, I think this is something that you can kind of you know pick up. Uh, you know your friends and family in it. Enjoy a lot of family time. Go on family cruises. But at the same time, if you're you know like myself, you can take a vehicle like this and do some you know light modifications and make it in something your own and make it a little clean and classy but at the same time you have a nice family vehicle. The only one thing that I would like to see as time goes on if they, they continue to creating this 2.0 would be that Honda. I know we've been waiting for it a long time. If Honda was to make a, a turbocharged vehicle in a rear wheel drive. That's honestly my only my only complaint that I could ever say about this specific car is it's front wheel drive but I mean for what it is it's a good car it's a great car it's, it's got a lot of pep and a lot of pickup and go it's clean it's smooth but uh, you know just make a rear wheel drive <laughs> cool is there anything you want to leave anybody everybody with um no no it's, it's stay safe happy holidays god bless cool well yeah guys this is going to be a continuing project I know it you can't stop Ryan from uh, continuing to modify things uh, and just make uh, what he drives on a daily basis uh, more of a reflection of him and that's what I love about seeing that so stay tuned again uh, go to his Instagram follow him up ask him some questions I know uh, the more we talk to other people in uh, into cars uh, the more we get uh, excited and have more ideas so uh, follow him and uh, who knows he might come back and uh, make another cameo on the channel once he does more uh, things so this isn't the last time you're gonna see this two liter sport with the manual transmission really quick uh, for those of you that are gonna end up following my page uh, my page is specifically designated to all the automotive detailing and stuff that I do um, talking to Edward I think it's a good idea that as far as people who are gonna follow the project on this vehicle we're gonna create an Instagram page and it's just gonna be designated to this vehicle specifically um, of the page that I have currently I upload a lot of my work and a lot of uh, detailed jobs and so you know pictures and stuff of my wife and I but I'm gonna create a page specifically for this vehicle and this vehicle only so and as you guys can see, Ryan is a wealth of knowledge. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you some good ideas if you own one currently or you're actually in the market to purchase an Accord, uh, either the one and a half liter or the two liter, maybe even the manual. So get guys- the, Get the 2.0, hey, trust me. <laughs>
Get the 2-0, you won't be you won't be unhappy. So I guess the one and a half's not even an option. <laughs> but I appreciate you guys. I'll catch you guys later. Let leave your comments in below if you guys uh, have any any questions and we'll try to try to get to them. But I appreciate you guys. We'll catch you on the next one. Peace.